Well, hi there. This is a beta. Specifically, this is beta splendens, the Siamese fighting fish. And I specify the species because the genus beta actually includes over 70 different species of betas. But this is the one you've heard of before. This is the fish that you often see in little cups at the pet shop. And while this is not how I would recommend that you keep your beta, there are some good reasons that they're kept like this at the pet shop. First, betas hate other betas. They are notorious for this. Males hate other males, and even females are pretty territorial. In the wild, what this means is that if a beta wanders into the territory of another beta, the two will do a big, showy, defensive display. This has a lot to do with why male betas are so extravagant, though wild betas are not nearly as showy as these guys. By looking big and impressive, much of the time, one of the two fish will flee without any blows being delivered. Animals that engage in combat every time they see a conspecific usually live short, painful lives without much reproduction. So most of the time, their conflicts can be settled without any violence. But if it cannot, it usually only takes a little bit of violence for one of the two fish to decide that it made a poor calculation in engaging in a fight and leave. Better to retire and save your aircraft. Push a bad position. It would be very uncommon for the two fish to ever fight to the death. You know, unless they were both in the same box together and there was nowhere to go when you decided that it was time to leave. Then you're just that guy that can't take a hint and you will keep getting hints until it kills you. Add on to this the fact that Beta Splendens has been selectively bred by humans for around a thousand years. And sure, some of that time was devoted to making the most beautiful fish they could, but most of that time was focused on breeding them for aggression. No, I'm not saying breeding the aggression out of them, I'm saying breeding the aggression into them. One of the major reasons people kept them was for fighting. They were kept as tiny water gladiators and used for entertainment just like chickens, bulls, or dogs are today. I am personally opposed to this sort of treatment of animals, but you have to know that it took an already territorial fish and turned it into a hyper-territorial fish. You can't just keep two, especially two males, in the same box unless that box is absolutely enormous. And most pet shops can't afford to give each beta its own tank. The second thing is that you can keep them in cups. Again, this isn't how you should keep a beta long term, but the reality is that it is possible. Most fish can be kept in a cup like this for at most a few hours, but soon the oxygen in the water runs out and your fish dies. It's hard to sell cups with dead fish in them, but betas don't die. And this is because they can breathe air right off of the surface, sort of like you do. Now, there are many fish that can breathe air just like you do. The arowanas and the lungfish that we covered previously would be great examples of this. There are many others as well that we will cover in the future, but that isn't what betas do. Betas are part of the suborder Anabantoidae, commonly known as Goramis. And the Goramis have a unique way of breathing air off of the surface called a labyrinth organ, which isn't a lung, or if it is a lung, is a completely different sort of a lung found in a different part of the body than your lung, the lungs of other fish, or those of other tetrapods. It's basically right in their heads above their gills. Betas, like lungfish, have gills, and gills are essentially areas with high surface area and high amounts of blood flow that allow large amounts of blood to get very close to water so that gas exchange can occur. Dissolved oxygen from the water can enter the blood down a concentration gradient, and carbon dioxide from the blood can enter the water, also down a concentration gradient. Not actually all that complicated. But concentration gradient refers to the fact that this process of gas transfer, called passive diffusion, moves gas from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. So, for example, as long as there is more oxygen in the water than in the blood, oxygen will move into the blood. But if there's the same concentration in the water as the blood 
it won't, or at least no more will move in than moves out. And worse, if the concentration is lower in the water than in the blood, it would actually pull oxygen out of the blood. All a recipe for dead fish. If you live somewhere like a fast-moving river or the ocean, this will probably never come up. But betas tend to live in warm, shallow, stagnant waters. Warm water holds less oxygen than cold water, and being shallow, it heats up quickly. Combine this with the fact that it isn't moving, meaning that the oxygen used by organisms in the water isn't being replaced quickly, it's a recipe for dead fish. Unless you don't need to get all of your oxygen from the water. Because air, as it turns out, holds a lot more oxygen than water, even when it's warm. And unless you are locked in a bank vault, a submarine, or a spaceship, the air you are breathing is part of what is essentially the air equivalent of the ocean. The oxygen isn't going to be exhausted anytime soon. And the labyrinth organ, like lungs, is essentially an air gill. Air gill in that they work very much like gills, except instead of being a highly vascularized large surface for getting large amounts of blood close to water, it gets that blood close to air so that gas exchange can occur. But instead of doing this with a modified swim bladder like lunged vertebrates, the labyrinth organ of betas and other goramis has a folded chamber of bone composed of some of the bones from the gill arches that does this job. Like lungs, this chamber has huge surface area and high amounts of blood flow. Now, this isn't a replacement for their gills. They still have gills and can pull oxygen out of the water, but not enough to, you know, survive. Even in highly oxygenated waters, beta gills do not provide enough oxygen to keep them alive indefinitely. A beta that is unable to get to the surface will drown. They are what is called obligate air breathers. And if you own a beta, you will see them surface regularly to fill their labyrinth organ with fresh air. And you will see them burp out air that has been depleted of oxygen. And this ability allows them to live for extended periods in a little cup. Not an ideal permanent enclosure, but workable for a few weeks while they're at the pet shop. But is this selectively bred beautiful beast a good pet? And is the beta the best pet fish for you. To help you figure this out, we're going to need to look at the beta based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. And why don't you go ahead and subscribe to our channel? If you're enjoying this video, we have literally hundreds more like it. When it comes to handleability, we give the beta a score of four out of five. And that is crazy. I honestly thought about giving them a one. I mean, you really shouldn't touch them at all if you can help it. But this is honestly a very easy fish to handle. They're small. They're not quick and darty. You can easily get one into an aquarium net. It can breathe while out of the water, so you don't need to be in a panic to get it back into the water. You could put it into a cup and carry it around if that were necessary. It won't bite or scratch. It doesn't even have the nasty bite of a lungfish. And, and those get a three out of five for handling. They deserve a four. But don't handle them for pleasure. Betas likely take no joy from the handling experience, and it just opens up the door for accidents, stress, and disease. Only move them when it is necessary, but no, it's not going to be difficult. I'd like to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon. You guys honestly are the reason that we are able to continue making these videos and to do them at this level. And right now, we are so blessed to have just over 500 patrons on Patreon, and we are so thankful for every one of you. But if we can get to 1,000 patrons on Patreon, Jason is going to dress up in a beta costume, essentially a flamenco dress, and dance around as though he were a beta for a Patreon extras video. And you <laughs> do not want to miss that. So please consider checking out our Patreon. Jason. Uh, <laughs> this is not a legally binding conversation. <laughs> when it comes to care, we give the beta a score of four out of five. And that's a dang high score for a fish. I want to start by saying that while they can live in a cup for much longer than most fish, they won't live like that for anywhere near as long as they would live in a better enclosure. 
Not only is that a lame life, but there are two big problems that will kill them in time. First is that the temperature in your home is likely a bit too cool for betas to live indefinitely. They need it to be between 75 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 24 to 27 degrees Celsius or 297 to 300 Kelvins. Some people keep their homes that warm, but if you don't, you will need a heater. And not only will you have a tough time finding a heater small enough for a cup of water, but the temperature of a cup of water with a heater can fluctuate rapidly, dangerously fast. Faster and hotter even than a shallow pool in Southeast Asia. If you need a heater, and you probably do, then you need a bigger tank. Also, while a beta can handle a low oxygen environment, they cannot survive with high concentrations of nitrogenous waste. We go into great detail about nitrogenous waste in our video on freshwater stingrays, but essentially, uneaten food, urine, and feces will all add nitrogenous waste to the water. In a big, properly cycled and filtered aquarium, this won't be a big deal as long as you do regular water changes. In a cup, this can fluctuate very rapidly. In a nutshell, don't keep them in a cup. It's okay for a short time at the pet store, but not for extended periods of time. You probably don't want to go any smaller than a 10 gallon aquarium, and bigger will be much appreciated. This will basically be a normal tropical fish tank. Keep pH near neutral, and do normal fish tank maintenance, including water changes. Be sure to properly condition any water added to the tank to remove chlorine and other chemicals. There are three big things to keep in mind. First, make sure that they can surface so you don't have to explain how you accidentally drowned your fish. Explaining obligate air breathers and labyrinth organs takes time, and, and now you know that. Second, these guys come from stagnant waters and have been selectively bred for frilliness. They can't handle much of a current. And third, while you can keep them with other fish, they are territorial and selectively bred for extraterritoriality. And they really hate other frilly fish, which also tend to be among the fish that they might actually be able to catch. So keep them only with fish that are faster than betas or look nothing like betas. Or both. Preferably both. Definitely don't keep them with other betas, except to breed. Breeding betas is very possible. We've been doing it for over a thousand years, you know. And males build cool bubble nests. But it is probably the only reason to keep betas with other betas. Even females should only be housed together in very large aquaria. As for food, there are many great beta diets out there, but also some that aren't so great. Floating pellet diets are generally the best staple. The diet should also be supplemented with small animals such as brine shrimp and bloodworms. Diversity is really the key. Try not to offer more than they will eat in a short period of time to maintain the water quality. With proper care, your beta should outlive your rats and can live up to a decade. When it comes to hardiness, this fish deserves a five. That is, assuming that you give them proper care. They can get some common fish diseases, such as ick, but any fish we have been keeping and breeding for a millennia is probably pretty hardy. Of course, if you keep them in a cup of water with a roommate, you know, uh, so they don't get lonely, then their lifespans can drop down to a few minutes. When it comes to availability, this is probably about the most resounding five I have ever given. I'm now curious if I can find a pet shop that sells pets that doesn't sell betas. And they come in a wide variety of colors, patterns, and tail frilliness. These glorious betas come to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which has available a huge diversity of spectacular betas. They also supply a huge diversity of other fish, and all of the supplies that you will need to keep betas or about any other reasonable aquarium fish that you might want to keep. Though probably not black-tipped reef sharks. You Bond villains might need to look elsewhere. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the beta a score of 4 out of 5. This is about the cheapest fish you can keep, but fish have a certain level of cost which is just unavoidable. The aquarium you need will not be expensive, neither will the filter, the water conditioner, substrate, the heater, or the food. It will all be pretty affordable, it's just a lot of affordable stuff that adds up a bit. The fish can be very inexpensive, though some rare and glorious varieties can run a pretty penny. Not an expensive fish, you know, but still a fish. And this is why, overall, we give the beta a score of 4.4 out of 5. Honestly, I think that's probably the best score we will ever give to a non-tetrapod fish. I mean, what else might come close? 
If what you want is a small, easy to care for fish that has been bred for a thousand years to appeal to your sense of beauty and your love for blood sports, then the beta might be the perfect pet fish for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Your love for blood sports. <laughs> oh, God. Con specific? Mm -hmm. What the heck is that? A member of your own species. Okay, Anabantoidae is about what I was going to say, but not with that accent. The Anabantoidae. I know how to say Goramis. Me too. M -m -m my Gorami. Jason is going to dress up in a beta costume, essentially a flamenco dress, and dance around as though he were a beta for a Patreon extras video. <laughs> and you do not want to miss that. Thanks, Cliff. Would you do it, though? Think about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Proper> motivation. <laughs> <laughs>